I'm not sure that I'm at liberty to say really. <laughs> but uh, but I'm really I think that I, I'm very interested in doing that. That would be great. Sure. A lot of people also wanted to know. Um, there maybe maybe there's even a trilogy. Of, you know. Listen, I'm I'm in. I think I think that I would. Obi Wan Kenobi. I know that there's been a lot of talk of wanting you back, and you would be interested in it. What's the situation right now with that? Just that. There's a lot of talk, and I'd be happy to do, play him again, but I, I don't know any more about it than you do. There's no um, plan at the moment. We're leaving. We do have one more announcement. After secrets and fibs and not being able to talk about it, I am thrilled to bring out a beloved member of the Star Wars family. Are you going to play Obi-Wan Kenobi again? Yes. And, um, I was excited to do our, um, our Star Wars series on the television format. I think it'd be cool. I don't think it will disappoint. away from people being able to see this. Is there anything you want the fans to know or any last thing you want to say to them before we get to see this series tonight? This is where the fun begins. Yeah! <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to discuss the Obi-Wan Kenobi show that released this year on Disney+. Plus. And did it truly disappoint? Now I say disappointing as many of the reactions to the show itself had been very mixed. But is that due to the actual show being bad? Or did, were the expectations just too high to live up to? Let's find out. Okay, let's start by talking about the main man himself. Obi-Wan Kenobi, played by the phenomenal Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor is back as Obi-Wan after 17 years he returns to the Star Wars universe better than ever, with his Alec Guinness accent and a magnificent beard. We talked about this, when the time comes he must be trained. I don't have much to say here except how perfectly Ewan portrayed this character. Even after such a long break, you can genuinely see the care and thought that he put into this role, and how happy he was being back. What happened to her anyway? She was ripped to pieces by kidnappers. Now who's hiding something, princess? His arc in the show was very touching and very well paced across the series, each episode showing us how he's evolving back to the lovable Jedi that we have come to know and how he is able to get over his guilt that he feels by what happened to Anakin. Now, I am planning to talk about the final duel in a different video, so I'll keep it brief here. His final confrontation with Vader was astounding, giving us a grounded setting like the duels of the original trilogy, but keeping the energy of the prequels, combining the choreography from both the duel on Mustafa and the flashback scene from episode 5, to create an ultimate duel. And lastly, the conversation at the end of the duel is heartbreaking, and sets up the dialogue in A New Hope flawlessly, and much better than Revenge of the Sith ever did. You have failed, master. The circle is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Goodbye, Darth. Only a master of evil, Darth. The emotion portrayed by Ewan makes this scene really touching, and the evil in Hayden's eyes embraces the terror of his character. It's also a great ending to Obi-Wan's arc that I mentioned previously, about coming to terms with what happened to Anakin. Him accepting that he is not the one to fail him and kill him. The cracked up Vader helmet is not only a great parallel to Star Wars Rebels, but it's a great visual metaphor. Obi-Wan and Ahsoka were only able to get to a part of Anakin by destroying half of the mask, while Luke was able to take off the mask fully and see Anakin fully. It's a clever detail, and the scene ends perfectly with a good old scream. Obi-Wan! Well, on the topic of Anakin, it's time to talk about the main antagonist of the show, 
Darth Vader, played by none other than Hayden Christensen and voiced by the none other but James Earl Jones. Both reprised their roles after 17 years. Well, except James Earl Jones. He came back for Rogue One and Star Wars Rebels. But anyway, Darth Vader is as terrifying as ever. His scenes in part 3 are something straight out of a horror film. And his first fight with Kenobi is yet again perfectly executed, showing us how weak Obi-Wan is compared to Vader at that moment, and how much Vader wants to torture the man. It's a short confrontation, yes, but one of the best in the series. <laughs> While Vader doesn't have an arc in the show, he is a menacing antagonist, even if he appears only after one third of the show. But I feel like that was the right choice, to keep us waiting to see him again. And the brief flashback from episode 5 was not only a great metaphor for that episode, but it's a nice scene of Ewan and Hayden playing the two characters as close friends. I was beginning to think you weren't coming, Master. Good. Then maybe I stand more of a chance this time. I especially liked how you can see Hayden Christensen being more similar to Matt Lanter's version of Anakin from the cartoons, bridging those two worlds far more further. Mercy doesn't defeat an enemy, Master! Lastly, from our main cast, we have Reva, and I have a few things to say about her. This is a character that I'm very mixed on, as from one side I like the idea of a Jedi youngling surviving Vader's genocide and going up so high in the ranks of the Empire to kill him. The acting was very good, and her arc could have been really great. I could say, as I think Reva should have died. If Vader killed her like he originally was supposed to, it would have given so much more weight to her arc, and added far more terror to Vader, making him a bigger foe. But instead, we saw her attacking the Larm's homestead for no reason and trying to kill Luke. Which I get what they were trying to do with the scene, but it clearly felt rushed so they could use her later in other projects. But oh well. For 5 out of the 6 episodes, she was pretty great. I think it would have been better if she was based off more on the second sister from the Fallen Order. I think in that way she would have been a bit more threatening than she actually ended up being. Now, let's talk about the other characters of the show. The supporting characters. First of all, Lil Leia was an amazing addition to the show. When I first saw Alderaan in the first episode, I was a bit worried, but she stole the show and her chemistry with Obi-Wan was fantastic. The actress is definitely the best child actor I've seen. I think you just remind me of someone. She was fearless too, and stubborn. I'm not stubborn. Yes, you are. I'm not. Tala was pretty great and a fun character. Her death was well done, but I think it could have used a bit less shaky calm. Haja was really fun. I don't know what else to say. His mini-arc was also really nice to see over the course of the show. As for the Inquisitors, while pretty underused, they were a great standout. Especially Rupert Friend as the Grand Inquisitor. He gave a very cheesy performance, perfect for Star Wars. And lastly, we have the biggest surprise of the show for me. Joel Edgerton and Jimmy Smith as Uncle Owen and Bail Organa. These guys were the real standouts, especially Edgerton. His scenes in episode 1 were really well done and his dialogue to Kenobi was both heartbreaking but real at the same time. As it makes sense why he would hate Obi-Wan so much and why he would be so opposed for, for Luke to become a Jedi since he knows what happened to Anakin. But he changed his mind at the end of the show, which was very wholesome and gave us the... Hello there. But with the characters out of the way, let's talk about the story of the show. As I said before, the main arcs are very well executed, except for Reva's ending is a bit too long. Uh, but that's talk about it later. But the main plot itself, the idea of Leia's kidnapping being an, uh, being something to get Obi-Wan out of his hiding is extremely clever, as of course he would go after her. She's Anakin's daughter after all. I liked how at first also Obi-Wan refuses to help, similar to Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi, but then he realizes she is his responsibility too. As I said before, the moments that they have together are fantastic too. One of the big complaints I heard about the plot of the show, though, was episode 4 in its entirety. Now, I think that's a perfect segue to talk about the criticism of the show and my personal frustrations with it. First few things that I didn't like were Leia's chase from episode 1. It's way too long and the directing really slips on that one. Second is the shaky cam in episode 5. There's just a bit too much shaky cam in episode 5. Other than that, it's really good. The score, while the main theme is spectacular, written by the one and only John Williams, the original themes were kinda whack. The Vader Inquisitor theme was cool, a bit monotone, but cool. I'm not saying they should have reused old themes, but create something new, more memorable, similar how they did that with The Mandalorian. 
but I am happy that the final battle at least had a good theme, as that was the moment, the main moment, where I wanted the music to shine, and it did that. They even reused a Last Jedi track in that scene, which was surprising. Now, those were my personal complaints with the show. Now, let's move on to some common criticisms. Reva I already discussed previously and talked about the score, so let's talk about the most controversial part of the show, Part 4. The biggest criticism around Part 4 is that it's filler, but I think it's not. Yes, Leia gets captured again, but it's a great way to show Kenobi regaining his strength as a Jedi. It's also paying homage to the Star Wars games, whether that would be its setting or the scene in the interrogation room. I personally really enjoyed this episode, as it was fun and action-heavy. And it showed us probably, for the only time ever, Ewan McGregor's Obi-Wan fighting stormtroopers. I also want to briefly talk about this scene. Many people pointed out that Kenobi's saber is unrealistic, and it bounces, but you can see it going through the armor. The reason only why he didn't slice up those troopers was because there was a little child in the room, so obviously he didn't want to give Leia trauma. Also. This scene was epic in episode 4. You were born! What the feet would bring! Anyway, another complaint is the way that Kenobi escapes in the trench coat. Yeah, it's goofy and kinda dumb, but then again, when wasn't Star Wars goofy and dumb? Watch A New Hope again, and look at some of the things they say or do. Star Wars has its deep and serious stuff, yes, but also isn't afraid to wear its heart on its sleeve. That's why it sticks with us after all. And this show perfectly balances both of the serious stuff and the comedic stuff, just like Lucas had in his movies. Speaking of Lucas, one last thing I want to mention is how each part parallels a part of the original Star Wars saga. Episode 1 takes place mostly on Tatooine, it's about a boy on that planet and it has a lot of Obi-Wan. Second episode is more of a mystery and it takes place in a city-like planet. Third one has a confrontation between Anakin and Obi-Wan, and one of them is being burned alive. Fourth is a rescue mission of Princess Leia with Obi-Wan. Fifth is about storming a base which our heroes barely escape, and sixth, a confrontation, both in a dual form and a talking form, where Vader's face is revealed. I just think that's really cool. Lastly, the ending is very touching with all the goodbye scenes and how both Anakin and Obi-Wan are seen by their masters. One is delighted and ready for the future, while the second one is focused only on the past and cannot let go of it. In the end, I personally believe that the Kenobi show did not disappoint. It lived up to my expectations. Yes, I could have had more flashback and more Qui-Gon Jinn. But honestly, it's a great standalone project. It gave me everything I wanted, an emotional story for Obi-Wan, some astounding fights with Vader, a bit of flashbacks to the prequels, but also got some great scenes with Uncle Owen, some awesome tension monologues from the Grand Inquisitor, and stellar non-dialogue scenes that speak volumes without a word. All of these things combined to one of my favorite Star Wars projects. I'm really happy I've got this show, and it didn't suck. I hope you love the show as I do, and if not, let me know what you thought of it in the comments. I'm Brixton and Kyber, and I hope you enjoyed this little analysis. If you want to see more, make sure to subscribe, because I have more videos coming soon.